Hello, hockey. Uh, hockey. I'm so used to saying that. Hello, Curly fans, and welcome to the 2022 Everest Canadian Senior uh, Championships uh, coming to you from the Yarmouth Mariner Center in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. We're into the playoff round now. We've got a championship pool. We've got a seeding pool. This game featuring a seeding pool matchup between Yukon and Prince Edward Island. Prince Edward Island, three and four. Yukon, two and five overall in the tournament so far. My name's David Doucette, and with me today, Aaron Sweeney. Welcome, Aaron. Thanks, Dave. It's great to be back here again. Looking forward to a great game today. Hopefully see these teams. They uh, took a little different paths to get here. I saw PEI had won their game earlier, and uh, UConn had lost theirs, but I'm sure UConn wants to get back on the winning track here again. They did the uh, pre-curl, the uh, in-turn, out-turn, clockwise, counterclockwise uh, the draw to the draw button, to the button. and right. I think we have PEI as uh, having the hammer to begin our match. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how they play this, uh, whether it's going to be wide open for the first end. I would expect that. I mean, uh, I'm not sure that these teams have been here in the center ice here as of yet, so might be different to uh, see if they're going to be playing it wide open here for the first end or if they're going to be a little bit uh, more aggressive. UConn throwing red stones, and they're coming out to us from the White House Curling Club. Uh, their lead, Donald McPhee. Then Doug Hamilton, Chris Meager, and Terry Miller. PEI throwing yellow stones, coming to, to us from the Montague Curling Club. And they've got Mike Dillon, Sean Ledgerwood, Kevin Champion, and Philip Gorvet. <laughs> Get the handcuffs out. Oh, you were on this side, right? And we certainly have uh, the Yukon skip on Mike, I think, because he's coming in loud and clear. Yep. <laughs> I think he's uh, he's one of the more vocal skips that I've heard out here so far this week as well. So we should hear him throughout the match. It'll be interesting to see how this one starts out. Uh, the last game I did two games ago, two draws ago, right away everything was uh, a guard, a guard, a guard. So they were really setting up to get rocks in play right from the get-go. Yep. Wow, can you follow that? <laughs> And see, that's right away, Dave, they're talking about, uh, you know, he was looking for the center line, and that's overcurled the center line by two feet because of the uh, rotation on the stone. He called it a lazy, yeah, lazy yep. handle again, so not a lot of rotation, and it finished. <laughs> they took a hard right at the end. Yeah, that's an Aaron Sweeney <laughs> turn right there it takes. Not finished quite moving yet, but the gentleman down here for you, Mike. The gentleman down here at the end for you. <laughs> Go finish her off. Tight. It's actually going to be very interesting, I think, because uh, this is the first game that I've done so far that has really had the, the skips that loud that yeah. you can truly hear them. I think the other player is going to be fairly loud when he finds out it's the police that he wants him to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are uh, quite relaxed, I think, right now. There's already been a couple laughs oh, just going uh, back and oh. forth, so. And I can see that, especially in this pool. I mean, like we had no? said this before, for people that are just joining us for the first time, uh, there were two pools in both men's and women's, seven teams each. And from that round okay. robin portion, the top four teams move on to the championship pool. The bottom three teams move on to the seeding pool. This is a seeding pool game, a little more relaxed. It's literally just to determine where everyone is going to be seated for the next championships. Yes, yeah, that's right. This one's got a little more weight, obviously looking to take something out. And roll behind. Nice start. Normal. Well, the good news is that the police officer knows that guy. It wasn't for a specific other reason. <laughs> Well, we're hopeful, anyway. <laughs> All of a sudden, oh. PEI's down to oh. three. <laughs> yep, yep. I was talking to PEI before the game. Oh, we'll let his shot finish first. Looks like they're trying to do a little Raised run back. Yeah. Well, well done. And uh, I know that uh, Nick was telling us about uh, a lobster boil that was happening down at the curling club. Yes. 
or at the golf course slash curling club. Uh, and a lot of the teams, especially the Western teams that were there because it was a big thing for them. So when I was talking to PEI while, uh, while UConn was, uh, was practicing before the game, I said, so I'm going to assume coming from PEI, you didn't rush down for the lobster. And he said, no, we get enough of that. But we did have some good clam chowder today. <laughs> Back and forth, they uh, get rid of the rocks. This, this one's not going to be an easy one. And there's the good question, since uh, Mike Dillon, the lead for PEI, was uh, having a conversation, obviously, with somebody he knew from the RCMP, and jokingly, they were asking, you didn't get arrested? <laughs> At least we hope it was a joke. Yeah. And I did see there, Dave, from earlier today in the championship round, both Nova Scotia oh, teams better. were able to pull out victories, so yep, yep, they're staying yep, on yep, top yep, of yep, things. Yep. Uh, I know Glenn McLeod's team, uh, men's team, they had a great game uh, right down to the end. They had stole one in the last end to win 7-5, to five. and actually Teresa Breen's team, they stole four in, the, in an extra end to win 9-5. Yes, the men's team currently with a 6-1 and one record are all alone in second place in the championship pool. And the women's team at 6-1 and one as well, tied for second with Quebec at 6-1 and one in the women's side. Yeah. So really in their, in their division, they're looking, or division in, that, in the championship pool, you're looking to become in the top four so you move on to the Saturday semifinals. And of course, the games that we saw earlier, or that were on earlier during the round robin, they actually carry forward. They're not wiped out. Right. How you did in that round robin portion, those first six games that you played, is part of your overall record. Yes. So anybody that just kind of got into the, you know, you feel good about getting into the championship pool, but if you got in, you know. If you just got in, you need to run the in, table. You do. Well, to, to be top four, definitely. Well, Whereas well, those done, top teams, done, 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 I mean, right, right now with only right. two games left uh, for Nova Scotia, ah. not that they want this to happen. Okay. Okay. But they could probably lose the next two games and still be top four. Well, they sh are really they have, close. They have three games left. Oh, right. Right. So and maybe not lose all three. Then. Don't lose all three. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind this way. And you certainly don't want to. Uh, you don't want to be on a losing streak going into those semifinals, even if that did, hap did happen. So. This has been a game of hitting and some really uh, well-thrown rocks as they've been raising a, a, a stone, sometimes there, sometimes not. Not this one, this is just a straight hit. Yeah, hit and roll, well. PEI, sitting, sitting one and two, the only two in the, in the house. We're down to the last rocks for the thirds. Yep. Yep, gotta go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, ah. okay. Good throw. Straight on. Was he hoping for that to maybe edge over a little? Oh yeah, he would like to get that behind that yellow one. inside out because you were tight right over your hand. Need to hide one of theirs since they're they don't have last rock this end so. You don't want to just walk out and give up two on the first end. One at the top of the rings is pretty well hidden by that high guard. Yeah. Not that it's not accessible. I mean, it's certainly just a straight run back. <laughs> See, Dave already. Oh, it's just a straight run back. Yeah, it's only a few feet. Yeah. <laughs> That's why these guys are at nationals and I'm not. <laughs> to me, that's a tough shot. To Dave, that's just a straight run back. That's right, because I don't have to throw it. It is straight. It is a run back. You do have those, same <laughs> those two things right. Those two words are correct. <laughs> Sip, skip stones now. Yeah. Philip Gorvet uh, for PEI and Terry Miller for the Yukon. Miller up first. I like this. First Gonna enjoy watching this guy, I think, because but every time that I've seen him throw, he's caught my attention. He's been throwing a bullet one end to the other, so maybe he's been in trouble earlier in the earlier in the week. This time he's got a, you know, he's just putting out a draw. But I have thrown, I have seen him throw a couple of bullets end to end. 
And this has been, this, this end has certainly been one of, uh, not a finesse end. It, no. But. They're leaving it alone. They either want it to curl or he's got more than enough weight. Yeah. Well, I'd say he's T-line, maybe a little behind. I think you just want to leave it, Kevin. Yeah. Just heavy, eh? Back line, yeah, well. And he called it just heavy. And, and you can tell, I mean, normally, if they're not using some sort of uh, a brushing technique to try to make it uh, curve or try to hope to make it curve, then uh, when they're leaving, when they're not brushing at all, then most of the times it means it's probably a little too heavy. Yeah, yeah it or was perfect. even, I mean, <laughs> PEI could have swept that back some, taken it a little further back, but he was happy with leaving it a little more accessible, it could see it. If they had kept thing, sweep, so. sweeping it, as well as going further back, would have it have gone further to the right as well? Yes, it would have been more buried behind that yellow rock at the top of the house and the red guard. So he said, might as well just leave it so that I, you know, he can visualize it, he can see that rock. Get out there, get out there, hit it, hit it right now. Hit it. Needs hit to it. move, and it is finally moving. And just, I was gonna say just enough. Not really. They're both, I, I can't really tell. I think yellow, uh, it's hard to say. Scott? They're both having a good look at it too, so they're not sure either. I think it's just one yellow from what they're discussing. So he's going back to the same shot. Going to try to bury it around that. Bury it around that uh, center guard. Top four foot. This one he'll have to make sure that he does bury so that he doesn't give them a chance of hitting that and uh, perhaps catching that red one at the back on the way by. For a big three in the first half. Yeah, you yeah. want to be careful of that. That's the one item here you don't want to. But they are set up because I think the rock at the front of the house uh, is probably county number one for yes. PEI. Yeah. Now, unlike the last time, our brushers are at this one quickly. It's a good skip if you can make it so that they're, they've gone from not Hard touching it. it to need to do a little Hard. bit with it. Yeah, he took the right amount of weight off. Yes, he did. Might have had a touch too much ice, perhaps, because it didn't. Uh, every, a lot of the other rocks we've seen here, you get them with the right weight there, you see them bury right behind that. But he still left that. You can see half of that rock. He's got to be careful here. Be very careful. Yeah. Uh, from a weight perspective, because you could slide right by. There's not a lot of room. We're going to throw the same weight. And they're going to throw the same weight. He liked the weight. Yeah. Not much more. It is a little he did make it past the uh, the guards handily the last time around. So to avoid the steal of one, it's given a lot of ice though for that. I mean, he was through to the hack last time, but. Hard on the yellow, Chris. Okay, that's pretty close, but it looks that's like a one yellow. One he yellow got at the just, top. just well, enough of it. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, they were already pointing to it, I'm pretty sure. Yep, one yellow. So after the first end, we'll have uh, the. PEI with one and Yukon Territory, no score. We'll be right back after this break. The Curling Cares calendar is back for 2023. 25 curling athletes from seven different nations are raising money for various charities. Support them by purchasing yours today 
at curlingcares.com. So a good shot at the end, Aaron, uh, and able to actually just got enough of it. We weren't really sure when it was coming down, were we? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see if he gets that type of shot again to see whether he tightens up the ice. Because it's, it's one of the two, isn't it? Yeah. It's that combination of ice, the amount of ice you're given as the amount of weight you're throwing. Yeah, because that's the one thing we had noticed here is that you get lots of curl with draw weight. But when you up the weight a little bit through the house, whether it be board weight or peel, whatever, straightens itself right out pretty quickly. So, you know, they weren't, I mean, they were taking a foot and a half of ice there, and hey, it's probably too much. Mike Dillon just with his first shot, and a special shout-out Mike would like to give to his two granddaughters, Callie and River, who are watching. Callie, River, time to root on granddad. Uh, or Papa, or, you know, whatever your <laughs> word of choice is. I didn't ask. Yeah. <laughs> and the UConn's going to go on the offensive here now. They're they're ready to play. They're going to throw up the corner guard, leave, uh, ignore that rock that's in the house. How close do you want it here? Are you, are you, like, if you, had, if you had to actually place that rock where you want it for a corner guard, is that what you're looking for? Because it's about middle, mid-length, if you will, from upper to lower. Or would you like it closer to the rings? Well, it's a great question, and I guess the what you need to be aware of is how easy it is to get behind that guard with the curl. Okay. So if you know where the ice is that you can get right behind that guard and it's, let's say, down on the logo in front of the house there, which is a, you know, a couple feet away from the house, that's where I've seen a lot of them ask for them because they feel they can get by that guard and they can bury right around there. If you're very much higher than that, you know, to, up, out towards the Everest logo, right? Um, then the rock becomes accessible both ways. Okay. You know, so you could go around that garden. You could get to a stone that looks like it's buried, but you could get to it easily either way. Right. So, are, are you basically saying that's pretty much a perfect shot, like where he where he has it? Yeah, he, I mean that's not bad. It's like know. I said, it's about middle. It's almost exactly from from the hog line to lots of line, guys. Whoa, to the top of the rings. Whoa, yeah, whoa, as I mentioned, whoa, I see whoa. some of the other ones they've asked for them actually, like on that logo that's in front of the house so just down a there. Just a little closer. A little closer whoa. to the house, Doug, but we'll Doug, see this one. Off, I mean, he's missing that guard by two by feet a by a lot. Come on. And from the finish, it's going to be right behind. But like, like you said, there's plenty of room. Yeah. So you know if you, he can come down and get a, anything by that guard within two feet, and he's going to be able to hit that. Right. So he can, and the more the more chance he has at that, then he can throw more weight and still make it by there and still make that play. And if you can add a little bit more weight, that allows you to potentially hit and roll better or like have, have your shot post hit do what your rock wants to wants to do oh and then of course just to show us that he wrecks on the guard are they gonna have to put that one back uh, oh yes he is oh, yeah. now we need the overhead um I, this was fully exposed right it was about three quarters yeah uh, Do they all go back to the were? That Anything that happens? Here. Yeah, they all go back. Oh my God. <laughs> this one here? Hey, guys, they, they probably would like an overhead of that, <laughs> if you could do that in the booth. Yeah, put it right up on the Jumbotron. If you could yeah. back it up to what it was before. Okay. Here it comes. Is that fine? Oh, yeah, it's okay. Whatever you like. Okay. Yeah, yep. kind of. It it's kind of rough. Yeah, oh, I can see that. That's actually the one that hit. That's the one that actually should be there, right? Whatever so this one here is out of play. Not that they're looking, but here's the replay. Yeah. <laughs> they can't yeah, hear us. Yeah. <laughs> it's the closest to where it needs to go. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, now they saw yeah, it on the Jumbotron. Uh, technology. All right, after all that, they've got the bo uh, rocks at least in the proximity of where they were yeah. before based on like mutual agreement. Yeah. Great. I think that's pretty close. Yeah, normally you only see one rock. You have to go put one back. That's complicated enough. Then when they hit that one that was in the house on the other side, they had to go find two and take them out, put them back where they were. So that guard did its job, Dave. Cause, yes, uh, as it turns out. Yeah, yeah, they wrecked on it. Yep. 
Gotta go. Gave him a little peek, talked him into going Gotta go. for it. Gotta go. So now they're just looking to clog that hole a little more. Yep. It's all good. Like once again, we, we had this discussion early, uh, or later, earlier in an earlier match. Uh, they're they're guarding that, but there's still lots of rocks in play, lots of things left to do. They're not even shot rock, but the red they're guarding. Right. Yeah, and even though uh, yep, exactly. even though PEI is sitting one, they're a lot more unhappy about the way this is set up area. than than Yukon is. Yes, at least early on in the end. Yep. And all of that could change with one good stone here. Wow, nice there was not much of a hole in there. Nice shot. That was a good shot. Well played Great shot. shot. And here's the instant replay. You got edge well, on edge. At least a little bit of it. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. And even a little roll, control. too. Yeah, and that just whiskered by that, that center line guard. One close to the center, I guess. Now we saw both teams uh, in the first end be very proficient at doing Whoa. a run back, Whoa. like the you know, three to four foot run back. They seem Whoa. to be right on top of the rock, and that certainly is available Clean. when they want it. Clean. Yep. Yep. For red. Hard. Hard. Whoa. Okay. Oh. That's just bad luck there. They made a great shot and he rolled it into that hole. I don't want this. Between the guards. No, I'll be the guard. Once again, here's the replay. That just got by. <laughs> he stuck it right there, so. UConn with hammer, but uh, right now, three rocks here. in the house for PEI. But two out of the three are very accessible. Yeah. Good news for PEI here is that there's still going to be shot rock after this rock's thrown, no matter, I would say, no matter whoa, how well he whoa, throws it. Whoa. whoa. Okay. Yep, that's a good shot, though. Yep. Makes it awfully hard to get rid of that red one that he just threw. Without doing damage to your own. That's right. Well, I'm thinking here. Yeah, yeah. They're going to come, gonna come around? I like it. Yeah, sometimes it's yes, not what are. you make, it's what you leave. Yeah. Third, Kevin Champion, now for PEI. Looks like they're going to try to draw around their guard. Yep, already sitting the one. Keeping the pressure on. Yep. Lines, just at the end, guys. Lines getting better. Lines okay. Lines okay. That's it. The ten meter. Looks a little heavy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Kevin. Right on the right on the T line. You bump it back a foot, that's fine. <laughs> so, I assume they wanted that to be more into the eight foot somewhere. <laughs> They're saying a little heavier than he wanted. Uh, must be. I yeah. That's behind the T line. There is it. It's right on it. Right on it. Yeah. I mean, certainly, uh, if you could be, you know, top of the forefoot, that's, you know, then they have to move that rock, you know, the whole way across the forefoot in order for their rock that they're throwing to be shot rock. Right? This one so. really stayed outside. And it's going to find its way right through everything. I'm not sure if that was a yeah. push out of the hack or uh, just a missed broom. So now they're probably going to follow their last rock in, only a little lighter. Yeah. Almost to use it as yep. a guard, because then they so. have backing. Top eight, top four. 
Yeah, top eight or top four. Yeah, so what I mean by that, Dave, is that if they're at top, of the, if they put this rock top of the four foot, yep. just like, let's say, just biting the top of the four foot, right. anything you hit is going to be a stone distance away from the four foot, and he has to push that rock all the way through the four foot plus that amount at the back for them to be shot rock at the top. Right. So you've got to use a little bit more weight than just coming down to it, moving it two inches. You've got right. to move it more like four and a half, five feet in order to be shot rock. And as we discussed, if you're, especially on this ice, when you're going to throw a little more weight, you're not going to get much bend. So right. you have to be able to see it. Like, if this is the right weight, uh, UConn's going to have to come up with something a little more creative, I think, in order to get in there. Cause Boy, exactly where he asked for it. Yeah. They're going to have to go through that hole, I think, one way or another. I just threw it half an hour ago, so. I'm just wondering if he hits that red onto the yellow as to where that red ends up. Because I think he can see all the red. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you just redirect it off that yellow right back into that pocket of those yellows. Like off that yellow in? Wow. Yes. And I'm pointing like everyone can hear like, me. Yeah. Well, well, everybody my, can hear you. My, my finger They just can't see your finger. There's no way I score. And that's what he's saying. He's afraid of, he's got two rocks to play with now. Give me less. I got to play like back line. Because I think he, he feels the pressure he of potentially so running out of rocks for this end. He only has two rocks to throw, and uh, right now there's a, a pretty good mess in that house. Got to get by that red one at the top. Like, That's what I thought. Absolutely have to. I could be wrong. Like, I got to play, like, back line and chip off theirs. So he's expecting the potential that he's going to have to nudge something on the way in. Not the way you want to play a shot. <laughs> Starting to come through. Yeah. Whoa. Doug! Hard! Hard, Doug! He got in there pretty good, but there was just so many things he had to get by and through to get to what he needed to do. Yeah, it's a, a great effort. Just you're giving him the same shot twice, though, right? I don't want to negotiate that. You going to plug up the hole now? Well, that's a hair more icy damage. That's not bad. No, he's nope, going back where he was, where he moved that other rock to. So, garden is yellows. Although that wouldn't be an easy uh, try to navigate through the hole, but weight was different, right? Yeah. I was thinking, uh, PEI skip doesn't want to go where the used con skip was going. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. So just following his last two shots down, but just with lighter weight in order to guard? Yeah. Top 12 weight. Did you say top 12 weight? Yeah, and realistically, this would have been the easier shot for the UConn. If he doesn't guard that side up, then they could hit it and roll in a bit and, uh, you know, perhaps get their one that way. Because right now, PEI is sitting two. Best to protect what you have first. Looks like he wants to hit his red. That was, I think that was the shot you were talking about. He wants to come in and, and uh, hit his red. Room side nose. Sure. No. Maybe a little more. Gonna have something no matter what, right? 
Now to get around their own guard, because where I'm looking at where that broom is. Yep. Is is he hoping or is he expecting that he's going to hit his red onto the yellow that's right beside it and have it veer towards the middle? Yep. Because I don't think he can get far enough to the outside to no, actually. No, because he's a asked to hit it on the broom side, part of the both the nose, but just off nose to the, where the broom is right now. So that would be pushing it into that yellow rock. And exactly what he wanted to do. Wow. That is, saving, shot. that is saving a big number. I can see those things. I just can't make them. So we see from the overhead again, it's exactly what we talked about. He had to use, yep. use the yellow in order to get his red right towards the middle. Well played. Wow, well, well. Nice shot. Great shot by the PEI skip. So after, uh, after two, we're all tied up at one apiece. We'll be right back after this break. Well, we're <clears throat> back to the start of the third end, and I'm not sure you saw a commercial. But uh, trust me, there was one there. <laughs> so we exchange uh, with a great shot. Once again, a, a terrific shot whoa, 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 by uh, Skip whoa, 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 Terry whoa. Miller. Uh, to uh, I, he, I think, what was he facing? Was it going to be three? Well, he was facing end. two. But facing there were two. But if things went wrong, it could have been much it, more than that. Yeah. Two that he couldn't see and that were in the forefoot. It's always hard to play, you know, he's facing two. Yeah. And he's only throwing two. his rock away from that direction. <laughs> well, they've uh, some of the teams have offered a little bit of bios on people. So we're going to start this end off with a little bio on lead Mike Dillon for PEI. Frontline worker at the Hillsborough Hospital, resident care worker. Uh, George and Bobby Dillon were both uh, accomplished PEI curlers and motivated him to be better. And I already said his shout out, I already did that for him. And well, this is interesting, something we certainly don't see a lot. He's right handed, but the only thing I play left is curling. You don't see that very often. Although I'm pretty sure I had a junior back in the day that before Christmas, he was right handed. And he came back after Christmas, and he was left-handed. That must have been quite the present under a tree. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple guards to start things off in this end. You want to confuse your coach, do that. <laughs> Just to kind of give people a heads up. And once again, wishing or thanking everyone for joining our streaming coverage of the 2022 Everest Canadian Senior Curling Championships coming to you from Yarmouth Mariner Centre in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. This draw brought to you by Besh Nutri... Nutri uh, by Besh. <laughs> Getting into this, we said PI 3 and 4. During the round robin portion, they had wins over Northwest Territories in Newfoundland, losses to Saskatchewan, New Brunswick, Manitoba, and Alberta earlier today. Uh, they uh, defeated Nunavut, 8-4. to four. UConn, 2-4 yeah. and four coming into today's action with wins over BC and Nunavut, and losses to Quebec, Northern Ontario, Ontario, and Nova Scotia. And they lost their opening seeding pool game to Newfoundland, 6-3. Th to three. Yeah, so for the people that don't know how the championship pool and the seeding pool works, so we, we say that we continue on those round robin Basically what it is is that once you have the two divisions, they started out in Pool A and Pool B. Top four made it into the championship pool of each. Bottom three went in the seeding pool. Now what they're going to do is they're going to play the three teams that, are in the, that were in the other pool that fell into that seeding pool. So this is almost like a continuation of the round robin in that it is impossible for you to play the same team again, and it allows you to play even more teams within your division exactly. to better... Uh, to better 
put your, to better seed you where you need to be for the top four. Yeah, and then so, like, for instance, in the championship pool, you'll see if one pool was stronger than the other, that will work itself out here over this championship pool because everybody in one division has got to play the, the teams that they didn't play from the other pool in that championship section. Three nice guards lined up along the top. Two in behind. I think uh, that Corvette was calling for a freeze. Yeah, PEI went around that corner guard, and Terry Miller just had them follow it down and just tapped it a bit. Now it looks like we've got shoe repair. And while we're waiting for that, maybe you can do a quick update of the uh, other matches that we have on. Oh, there are today. other games here, too. Hot dog. <laughs> so, uh, yes, yeah, so over here on uh, Sheet E, we have Northern Ontario and Newfoundland tied at one apiece after two, and that's on the men's side. Uh, in the ladies' side here, we have Northwest Territories 2 nothing over Manitoba. Another women's match. The There's only four out here at the Mariner Centre here this afternoon. PEI is up on Northern Ontario on the ladies' side, 2-1 to one after two. There are also two games going on at, uh, at the Yarmouth Curling Club here right now. And at the Curling Club, it's New Brunswick versus Nunavut on the women's seating pool and Northwest Territories versus Nunavut in the uh, men's. I'm just glad to see all these things that happen other places that I, I think only happen in our curling club, but they apparently we've either they've been here too long or it happens everywhere. I just saw that uh, one of the teams in the ladies, they threw the wrong color rock. So, really? Yeah, so that had to be replaced. They had to go get their rock and bring it back down. So what happens in the case? Like You're not really penalized for it? They just No, you just replace one. Just everything goes other. back to the way it was. You don't get to throw it again or anything. Just. Okay. What do you got? <coughs> yep. So they're going through that same hole. Everybody is. Uh, the right yeah, yellow sure. guard and the center red. And this is going to be the fifth stone in a row that goes through there. Okay, but this one's going to crash. <clears throat> Little bit, Mike. Keep going there. That's going to. That's going to make that hole just a little slimmer. Yeah. UConn is is not afraid to uh, play with rocks and have rocks in play here, that's for sure. They're sitting two. They're looking to put a third one up in there. Not worried about guarding. They just want to get theirs, theirs in the best spot they possibly can find. So. Miller just uh, had his arm out to the left, indicating it's it's a little far left. Yeah, a little outside the broom. And he's going to wreck on that guard. Creating an even bigger wall. Yep. And that bigger wall uh, certainly is not going to be bad for UConn right now. Is there one and two right now? Yeah, the only problem is he's giving them a chance to, if PEI so wishes, they could come down to those two rocks again. Now there's a bigger hole, but. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think he can get there. So it looks like they're going to try to go through that same hole that UConn just tried. Question of speed here, potentially, of weight. Yeah. And that's just going to be a nice gentle raise of uh, the Yukon stone. Just when you think you've got the ice figured out, it doesn't do what you expect it to do. And it's things like that, that's what separates you from being, you know, like they talk about the top level teams. It's something happens out here and it's how quick you adapt to that. You find a spot, you know, you could be going down 
two paths on the same sh on the same side of the sheet. One path might be quicker than the other. You have to know that. How quickly you adapt to it. That just nudged off that guard. Because that wasn't going that far over. That literally just, if we get a replay on that, and here it comes, I think you're going to see it just nudge. Yeah, it moved. It wasn't coming yeah. at this angle. <laughs> a fortuitous brush yeah. off of the rock. And now we've got some weight. Okay, okay, that's okay. So this one was. Oh, let's go the replay there. Okay. All right, now we need another replay. Okay, here it comes. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. I'm good with it. If you're good with that, I'm good. All with good, it. guys. Yeah. Sorry. All good, man. A lot of stuff going on. <laughs> there it is, there. <laughs> there, now they're getting a really good look at what it, yeah. where it was. Yeah. Oh, Thanks to the people in the booth. All right, well, that, at the very least, creates a path in because they've that, that big wall of stone in front of the house is, yeah. uh, has a few less now. You know, and that's one of the great things about curling, right? These guys got together, and they, without really any interference by an official or an umpire, they said, Here's what, because it's really supposed to go with a, a rock that's been moved that was already sitting there. It's not a burned rock or anything, right. but it shouldn't have been there. It was hit by a rock that went out of play. Right. So they put rocks where they think that they would have ended up. Right, in that case. One and of they them, went with one an of them agreement moving, between definitely. the two, yeah. and that's where they're sitting. <laughs> I say. <laughs> There was no, oh, I think that was going out. And no, no way it wasn't. It's, you know, curling is just done and yep. it's the way we play. So it looks like uh, Miller wants to put another one into the house here. Try to hide it behind that uh, yellow guard just off of the center line. Yeah, he's going to keep the pressure right on him here. He's going back around that one center guard now. This is where really we're going to finish this one off. Yeah, it's not shot rock. It's, uh, it's an interesting spot. But right now, with two rocks left for PEI, Yukon <laughs> City with one, two, three, and four. Yeah, that's a, that's a great spot. Yeah, and this is going to cause a bit of a discussion. We don't see this a lot. This is but there's a lot of rocks in play, and like the last end, only in reverse. Where the where UConn was able to bail themselves out with a great last shot, I think PEI is trying to figure out with our last two rocks, what do we need to do so that we don't get hit with the big crooked number. Yep, that's right. He picks it off and then to draw you for back here. Yeah, you got him on the jumbotron. I think so because if he picks it, then at least they have the same shot again, right? Yeah, I think if you have the right weight, it'll, it'll move, though. Because yeah, if he plays really down to those team. rocks that are We've the back, the guard, right? then I mean, I Terry Miller's going to have that. He could yeah. tap that yeah, one back he just it's put there. Me, if they ignore that rock, he's always going to have that tap on that one he just okay. put there. Mm -hmm. Tap that back into the forefoot. It's going to be awfully tough to get back, get out. So this wants to be an awfully great shot here by, by Team PEI if they're not if they're going to avoid that problem here. <laughs> Just your interesting end, eh? Yeah. 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 Understatement, eh? Yeah. <laughs> this has been pretty enjoyable already, to be honest. It's yeah. That did burn a little bit of their shot clock off, though. Yeah, the thinking time is dwindling away. Although, Dave, if you want me to read that number from here, you are out of luck. <laughs> Off, Mike! Off, Mike! Off! Off. 
All right. Uh, I believe they have shot rock. Behind the tee line, he could certainly just follow it down, be right on top of it. You think we're even for another 20 feet, huh? So do you think you wanted yeah. it to be that deep, Aaron? No. No, not that. He would have no. wanted to be on, on top of No, he wanted to, I mean, he wanted to be buried behind that, behind that guard and that red rock, but he's not there either. And A lot of ice being given for this one. Room outside the rings. Yep, froze right to the face of that. So that's all they have, isn't it? Follow that same yeah, one I don't down. I don't think he wanted to be rock? that deep. I okay. think he was. His thought was that he wanted to be shot rock, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that meant heavy. It spelled a little different, but it heavy. And uh, but he was just hoping to be in front to make these guys hit it, and then if you're hitting it. There's Who obviously a lot of rocks back there to catch it, right? Yes. This way, all they have to do is fall, play that same shot down into that pocket with, assuming you get the right line, one yellow. One yellow. And get themselves out of a, out of a steal. Yeah. Line's good. They like the line. Nothing much but a... Needs to curl. It needs to curl. Never. And I nudged yeah. it enough. Nudged off the other red that was beside it. So it looks like we got one yellow there. So PEI is going to take a 2 1 lead after three. I need a lot we'll be right back after this break. <laughs> the Curling Cares calendar is back for 2023. 25 curling athletes from seven different nations are raising money for various charities. Support them by purchasing yours today at curlingcares.com. Well, Aaron, we've seen back-to-back -back skips throw a last rock that get themselves out of trouble uh, and uh, not get the steal that the other team was looking for. So far, it's been you have hammer, you get one. You have hammer, you get one. That's been three ends in a row, but uh, there was an opportunity for both teams to actually do something good there. Yeah, it, it's been a great game so far. It has. Lots of rocks in play. You know, they're being very aggressive. Um, they're going right after it. Certainly uh, one on. It's not like they're getting one or two in the house and protecting that or anything. They're trying to get one in a better spot. If they've got one that's in the eight foot, they say, you know what, I got to, you know, if I'm going to score on these guys, I got to put one in the four foot. No guard in this one. We're going right to the nose. <laughs> Where is he going on this one? I mean the first rock. Yeah. With no guard, I said oh. it was, he put yes. it right in. Right to the button. Yes. But then again, I think these guys are throwing up a corner guard here again. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah. All right, let's start talking about Sean Ledgerwood, second for Team PEI. Works as an air and water monitoring supervisor at the PEI Department of Environment, Energy, and Climate Action. His father influenced him into curling and coached uh, several of his of uh, Briar teams. He's had four Briar appearances. Accomplished coach was coach of the PEI women's team that came runner-up to the in the Scotties. Favorite hobby is pinball. Just over. He owns several and loves almost, he loves it almost as much as curling. Line's good for here. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming, Mike. I got, I got it. Bit of an update from our other uh, matches. 
Yeah, we do have uh, Northwest Territories over Manitoba, 3 nothing now, playing the fourth end. We've got PEI women. Uh, the last match was a women's as well. The PEI women over Northern Ontario, 3-1 to one after 3. And they, there was a blank in the third end between Newfoundland men and Northern Ontario. So that game still knotted up at one apiece. Yeah. Which is what, what it's meant to do, the way that this is set up there, Dave, is that, you know, you get the championship pools, you get some close games, you get the you get the seeding pool, you get some close games. You get in towards the weekend here, you know, Thursday till Saturday now, we're going to be having close games throughout. Right. That was so close, and they were yelling because they knew that they were very close to that, uh, to that guard, but unfortunately they did have a bit of a rub on that guard and didn't quite get what they were looking for. Yep, now PEI is going to play into the house here. They're going to look for the hit. I'm hearing, oh, no, no, no. And that's why. Yeah. <laughs> the problem was that the uh, the hit was on his own stone first, but then he left the uh, UConn, UConn territory stone sitting shot rock. So. It looks like UConn's going to want to Come around that center guard. Put pressure on PEI like they did the last end. Yep. Yeah. I think because of weight, they're worried about this really finishing quickly. Spin it off of there, spin it off of there, spin it off, spin it off. You like that? Terry was looking for a lot of action from those sweepers after it made contact. And they were like, yeah, no, we're, I'm, I'm, we're, we're done. done. We're done. We're done. <laughs> we had 50 feet of sweeping. Yeah, we got it here. <laughs> So looking to come around that uh, wall of guards up top. Room. and Room, lots of room now. Just let it die, let it die. Yeah. Yeah, we get those rocks out of the forefoot, and now everybody's looking to put one back. So. Don't make that tougher there. Oh, yeah, great shot. Beauty. Yeah, that's a great one. That is a really nice shot. Shot. I don't know what happened to your first one. He didn't. It just wasn't enough ice, but... That's all. Close. Close. Yep. Looks like a similar shot. Yeah, they're trying to freeze down to the face of that yellow stone. Yep. Because they know they can't get it with this one shot. Hard. Freeze it on there. Come on. Come on, guys. Oh, another great looking shot. They can get that to the face of it. Just a touch light, but both of those just got by that uh, center guard. Yep. I think you'll find maybe before long, if they get a chance, UConn will go out and they'll move that guard, and then that rock that they just thrown still difficult to take out. So it's force uh, PEI to protect that with each shot from there on out. We're hearing yelling from a from a different surface. Oh, 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 oh. oh Mike. Oh, guys. Got a lot of work to do. Oh, 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 oh guys. Okay. Go now. Yep. Now you got it. Yep. Yep. Tuck it a bit. Tuck it a bit. Tuck it a bit. Tuck it a bit. Good spot, Kevin. Nice shot. Another good shot. So similarly, about getting one out, now it's hard for the red one as well to 
Yep, because you know, you'd have to move in a couple stones. Not saying that they won't try. Just nice, normal. Looking for a run back here? Uh, he's, no, well, not oh. necessarily a run back. Going to remove that guard. Yes. Maybe catch a piece of the yellow one on the way by. Well, that gets one out of the way, but yeah. with that weight, it looked like, it did, I mean, it certainly didn't look like they were trying to peel it, yeah. so it looked like they were trying to hit it back onto the yellow, right? Like hit their red. Yeah, I think the they other. wanted to move that yellow one that, yeah. that yeah. they had just put there. They wanted to kick it one way or the other. And that rock they just got rid of, it looks like B.I. wants to put it right back. Yeah, just let it die. It looks a little heavy. Okay, just let it die. It's definitely going over center. Let it die. Let it die. Yeah, beauty. Good shot, Kevin. Yeah. Nice shot. Uh, I think he could have used that. Half a rock. Yeah, well. Skip says beauty, but I... Don't he's know being that a good teammate. I don't know. Yeah, he's being a good teammate. I think he wanted to protect that. He wanted to protect a little bit more of that yellow. All right, so here's a question that uh, Miller just said. I'd rather have you miss it thin than thick. Explain to me the difference between thin or thick in this case. Okay, so thin would be on the, so it would be more on the broom side. So he would just catch it and catch just it across as opposed to hitting it thick and perhaps driving the red one out and leaving that yellow one still in the house. Okay. Yeah. And that's, he put it in his head, didn't he? You noticed how that happened, did you? <laughs> he missed it I wasn't real even thin. thinking of that. <laughs> yeah. That was so thin, it was invisible. Yeah, like we can for sure, but I think it comes harder. Or we fill it this way. A lot, of, a lot of sports are a mind game, and that's the prime example right there. We're down to skip rocks now. That had a little more weight, they were saying, so I think with that extra weight, if you thought it was going to move at least a little bit. But I guess if he was looking for it to hit thin, he was really just looking for it to chip it out of there, basically. Yeah, I mean, I, it, that, and he said if that's if you miss it, right? So, yes. I mean, he wanted you to hit it. I think he was looking for it to hit the yellow onto the red, onto the yellow. Okay. But it was, if he hits it thin, it goes across the face of that red stone and maybe pushes it back or misses it all together. Right. If it hits it thick, thicker, it comes down and maybe it peels the red one out without ever touching it, and the yellows all stick around. So. Right. All right, where's this one going? Oh, weight's good. Is he looking to raise one weight's of his own? Good. Weight's good. Just trying to guard, oh, but going no, the other yeah. turn. Still there. It actually guards the, uh, still a tough shot. Guards the over curl. So the same shot they just tried to make and missed is still there. Yeah, um, Maybe it's too late to make that well, same shot. Probably still hit it too thick, so a little more, a little more. Weight wasn't terrible. Uh, I'm just a little perplexed as to the why he changed turns. Oh, okay. I guess it's to, to be honest. Is it a comfort level? But at this level, it shouldn't matter. You should be able to throw it either way. Um, oh, I mean, they've been throwing that turn, seems like. I you just had to perhaps know, okay, I could take a little bit more ice and throw a little less weight, and I'm guarding. And like you say, with the amount that it's well, curling, you know what? We, you could still leave a hole. This can't be a huge hole. Just a little curious as to why to change, because normally you would throw a turn that would go 
towards where you're going or towards the hole you're pr protecting, I guess, or mm -hmm. that where you want it to end up instead of away from it. All right, Miller's got a little bit of weight. And obviously he's going to be close to the guard. Got her. Got it. Well done. Great shot. Again. And here's the replay. That'll give us a better uh, view from yeah, just over top. Yeah. That just made it by. That's running right here. Well, that's coming right here, too. That nose, does that run straight back? I think so. So UConn with that shot. Now PI is looking at what can we do to uh, avoid UConn taking two in this end. Well, I think UConn's only sitting one. Mm -hmm, but they still have still have last rock. rock. Yes, right. And and the one that they're sitting right now does not seem reachable easily. <laughs> and this is the kind of thing where you know what I mean. These they've got a bit of a hole there. It's not. It's awfully tough hole to get in there to draw through that on that side. Mm -hmm. um, and he's, you know, so the PEI skip here is thinking about maybe perhaps playing a run back. Oh, he's looking at those angles, how those two yellow rocks that are together are lined up with the red in the house. Oh, to see whether or not it would just. And just hit that naturally right on the nose and take that out. And then all of a sudden, maybe PEI sitting three instead of just the one they were sitting here, you know, one shot ago. Good trick shot, though. And it is. It does seem and it does look like that's what they're doing. Yep, and they're far enough apart that they should, you know, it's not, uh, there's a, we'll get into talking about how the angles and how they work differently. If they're close together, you get the push method and so on. These ones should work fairly natural with that space between them. But a Maybe big shot, big shot for Gorvet is uh, just his off final nose. Stoke. You got it. He hit wow. it a little thin. But. So a pair of really nice shots. And we're probably going to get a replay of that. If you see that. No, I know. What's the bad thing? Yeah, he had to hit this a little more towards the nose, and he would have made that perhaps without rolling out. You could have stuck it right there behind all of those. So what do we have to do to get a nose? It looked like it was going to get there, though. So, I mean, there's certainly room. I mean, just I say you just have to get to the four. But uh, you expect with some of the shots that we've seen that that's very doable. And based on where his ice is, he just asked for a little more. He's right on the edge yeah. of the rings. Yeah. And just has to make sure that he gets inside that red guard. Once he's inside of that, they can just go for weight. Actually, give me a less. Like, um, yeah. So as we've seen in the last few ends, it's come down to a skip stone uh, that has to be a decent shot to avoid a steal. Hard, boys. Hard! Chris! Help! Hard! Yeah, that's on the yellow already. Hard! It's going to die now harder. Help. Yeah. Carry. And no matter how much yelling and hard you said, it just was it yeah. just didn't have the weight. Yeah, he get it curled a little bit more than what he was thinking. Got onto the yellow, and it makes a big steal of two. First mistake Miller's made so far this game, I would say. So now uh, going into the break, we've got uh, PEI with a three-two lead over uh, four-one lead. Four-one lead over Team Yukon. We'll be right back after this commercial. It's a beautiful blend of strategy, skill, and creativity. Curling. But it's our people that make us great. We're a mosaic of countless experiences. We communicate. We collaborate. We value new ideas 
the different perspectives. We learn from our past and from our future. We may even disagree sometimes, but it's in our differences that we can see our strengths. The beauty of our sport is reflected in our people and our values. Regardless of your ethnicity or gender, your abilities, your stage in life, your beliefs, or who you love. The rocks and the ice don't discriminate. And as curlers, we won't either. We will be the change that we want to see in the world. Curling is a place for everyone. The Curling Cares calendar is back for 2023. 25 curling athletes from seven different nations are raising money for various charities. Support them by purchasing yours today at curlingcares.com. It's time to experience the wonder and excitement of Yarmouth and Acadian shores. Stay at one of the many charming accommodations, adventure along the ocean coast, or just be cozy by the fire and enjoy some of the darkest and clearest skies in North America. This December, be a part of the action with the Everest Canadian Senior Curling Championship. You'll find all of this and so much more with your special getaway in Yarmouth and Acadian shores. Welcome back, curling fans, and other action that we're seeing uh, over on sheet A, one? E. E, okay. Newfoundland four, Northern Ontario one, and that's after four ends. Uh, they're at the break next door, and uh, Newfoundland, uh, sorry, Northwest Territory is up four nothing over Manitoba. Certainly our match that you've been following, you know, is 4-1 in favor of PEI at the break. And over on the far side, uh, if we can see it, it is four to one. I haven't seen any ladies the whole event. Here they are. Three, it yep. is three to one, sorry, PEI over Northern Ontario on the women's side. So we've had a really good match. We were just talking during the break, uh, Aaron, and we were saying there's been a lot of really good shots, a lot of rocks in play, uh, some run backs, some just getting around guards, and really that last missed shot was one of the first times we've seen that in this match. Yeah, and it was costly oh, for UConn. That's where that came from. Okay. Yeah, this. I mean, to watch Terry Miller, he's. I mean, he shot the lights out. I'm. I guess you could say, from all the games that we've seen so far, up until that last shot. Now he's down four-one. Yes. So like, it just took that one. You know. But we were seeing that right. Every end in the last three ends. That's what we've been seeing. There's been that last shot that needs to be made, and if it's not made, you're giving up a steal of two or three, uh, and that was the case. Yep. For sure. I mean, he okay. made even made a great shot to get himself into that position, and actually it made it almost worse for him for his last okay. one. Because PEI okay. came down, followed him down, made the run back. Okay. Just bad yeah. luck with where he had okay. ended up. No, that's fine. That one's going to make it all the way to the house like. and past the tee line. So, uh, yeah, UConn's going to uh, keep, obviously, keep Hammer uh, in end number five. Sitting here watching the uh, Northern Ontario uh, Newfoundland guys game here on GD, and 
They're, there's a lot of rocks. Their mate's trying to stand in the house, but he can't stand the forefoot because there's no room because there's seven rocks in there. And this one's coming in hard, so something's going to happen. Not the game you're watching, folks. Sorry, we're talking about Sheedy. Yeah, but there's the, uh, there's the corner guard that UConn's looking for. They're going to go right back after him here again. Both teams have been doing that. Yeah, looks like PEI's going to play a little more conservative, perhaps bring their second one into the rings here again. So try to bring the play a little bit more in the house. Yep. Yeah, the first one was probably a little deep, and so obviously trying to give it a little bit of protection. Yeah, I think UConn, they're going to try to move that one a little bit and perhaps and uh, move that one back and roll over behind that corner guard if at all possible. I just saw Miller taking a look at his stopwatch. I haven't seen that a lot. And Nick and I were commenting that not everyone's using it. It seems to be more of a, I don't want to call it a feel, but yep. just looking at what you're seeing yep. and, and knowing the ice from the, the few days you've been here and the number of draws that you've yep. played. But I think he's looking to see, has the ice changed? What, uh, what type of time yep, happened yep, yep, for yep, it yep, to yep, get yep, to yep, yep, yep. the top of the eight? Well, I mean, you have to remember that Terry's a skip as well. I mean, so there's a difference between, like myself, I've played Long skip, played front end, you know, um, even yeah, on different yeah. nights, like we'll be out and play mixed doubles. Right. And I go out and mix doubles and I'm sweeping. And it's good to know you get from that, you get a different appreciation of how fast rocks move when you're going with it, as opposed to standing at the skips end and waiting for it to get to you. Right. So you could tell the difference right away as your sweeper, and that's why those sweepers are in charge of telling you what the weight's tell like the weight. and the skips not. Um, that's not his role. So, but he still needs to have an idea, you know, from whatever he might be timing from to see whether he, you know, give him a guide as to whether it's close or way heavier, way light. That was a really nice shot by uh, PEI second, Sean Ledgerwood. Just got by the uh, guard and picked that Yukon uh, stone out of there beautifully. And now early in this end, they, they have three in the house. Yep, they're forcing UConn into into a straight hit now, which is great news for PEI with the three-point lead. So, I think we have to punch th there. so I'm, I'm assuming for that they were hoping it wasn't going to just wreck on the back or jam on the back, I mean, and, uh, and the maybe peel both off if they could have. I, I think he was more interested in where his rock went as okay. opposed to what stayed. I think he wanted to either group his over with the yellow on top of it, make it tougher for, you know, you see PEI's getting up there and they're trying to rip his rock out of there. He wants to make that as tough as possible moving forward, right? So. So unlike some of the other uh, ends that we've seen, this this one seems to be a hit for hit. Yeah, that's just the way the rock set up early. Yep, and I'm going to give that at least one more rock, Please. and then that's going to stop whoa, probably. Whoa, 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 I have a feeling. Whoa, 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 whoa. Done. Hard. Maybe not. Maybe it'll one take more. a little longer. <laughs> well, I knew this one. This was the one I was counting. But be interested to see what uh, Terry it, Miller from UConn asked for next. At this point when you're doing this, are you hoping you've heard a mistake from one team or the other through all these hits where a rock isn't going to end up where you expect it to be or, uh, you know, something hits something a little too fat or a little too thin and the rock just doesn't go where you expect? Uh, yeah, I... I mean, yes. Just see I how mean, the end plays out, basically. Yeah. Well, there you go. Won't be a take-o play here. See, I gave it that one rock, and there it, the it is. There it is. Now we're starting again. <laughs> yep. Here goes the draw behind that guard. So something we haven't seen, 
with seven rocks to go. Nothing's in the house. Nobody's got any pressure on. And we get to see if anything can happen just at the end of a at, at the end of the end. Yeah. We'll be checking to see. <laughs> or will it just be a blank? <laughs> Because it gets to this pace, especially when you're only playing eight ends. It's not a 10 end game. You're down by three. UConn doesn't want to come away with one, with being forced into taking Line's one. Perfect. Right. See that? A lot of glide. Back here. From what I've seen here, Terry Miller's not the type of guy who's he's sit not gonna, back and blank. He's yeah, without a fight. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's going to be trying for two until he only has one rock left, and everything else is at the backboards. And PEI, on the other hand, if they can hit, if they can pick this one out of here. There it is. Push that to the side. Okay. Yeah, they were trying to curve that in with the directional sweeping, but they couldn't quite get it over enough. Yeah. So as a result. And what I mean by that, I, I like his confidence. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's got that. Go for it. Yeah, he's got a level of confidence about him that's definitely good, what you want to see in a skip. I still thought it was plenty of movement there for that. What's that? Line's perfect. Line's perfect. Just biting it. All right, so he's deciding in that case to use his high guard and come up behind it so he has a little bit of protection. With this few rocks left in the end, would yeah. another option have been to split the house? Sure. I mean, does, doesn't that set him up? Uh, or, or is it too early because we're just going to see PEI say, great, you're on either side there. We're going to come behind your guard now. Uh, you could. I, I mean, I would be surprised if... He, he was pretty heavy, though. I guess the way I'm thinking, yeah, the way thought. that they're looking at it is if they if they spread the split the rings. Yes. Certainly one option you could do, right? Then you're playing a hit and this type of thing. And, you know, what you're hoping to get to. This way, he's playing behind that guard. If PEI hits this, I mean, these two rocks are in a great spot for UConn, right? If he hits this and he doesn't roll, maybe he rolls out. He doesn't out, roll both of the middle? He yeah. can go back around those again. Right. And then PEI's looking at two rocks that they can't see. Or they're not looking at them, however you want to say it. That just stayed that off, was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> off the bumper rack. That was, uh, <laughs> he hit that on the outside and it was half in the rings. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so this is what we're going to see here. So you see, and he's going right back around those. With yeah. one is just biting the 12 foot. And really, he could bury this around there and still be in front of the T line. Right. And then he's not looking at two, he's looking yeah. at more than two. So based on the ice that they're giving here, it looks like he's, and you're saying he definitely wants to keep it in front of the tee because it's important not to allow uh, yeah. PEI to basically freeze up right in front of him. Yeah, and I think he knows that he can get to a spot he wants to get to in front of the tee. I mean, that other rock is just on the rings, buried behind that rock, you know, solidly. And he was, there was no, never any doubt he was by that guard. Way out there. That one's hanging. Take it deep. Just take it deep. As long as you're not through. And that's why they're not brushing. That's why. Uh, you wouldn't want a lot of brushing on that. Nope. No, they were making the right move, disregarding what the, the skip was saying. <laughs> Take it having deep. a better view of what Already the weight there. was. Yeah, <laughs> we've done it for you. <laughs> well, I can, but I'm not sure what I can see with there. So. How much? Okay. Good 
I still think I want to work it in. Some more of the fans here today? And he's uh, he's sitting too, and he's uh, you know what he's upset with himself is where he put that rock. Still not in a great spot for Team PEI. No, I mean yeah, he's coming down to one that's at the back of the house, half on the rings, and he's hitting it. You know, you got to hit this. You got to hit this pretty perfect just to be on the rings afterwards. And if he's not on the rings, you know what, UConn's got a free draw for two. Well, and that's why I don't see, I don't see how you can hide this well enough that UConn can't get to it because there's so much separation between the biter at the top yep. of the rings and where this is going to end up. So uh, they should be looking at it too, but you have to throw the stones. Yeah. Just clean. Just clean. Yeah, he was giving up the two there. So, any play, any piece of the rings is all we need. Yeah. And you know what? Actually, good thing, good on the PEI skip says, you know what? I'm, you know what? I, I'm going to give them two. I'm going to play the scoreboard. You know what? I'm up one. I'm not going to get crazy with my last shot. We just stole two. freeze or anything yeah. like that and bring a three into this. Nose and, you know, put the would have been good too. Limit the damage, if you will. Yeah. No. It's, it's very sensitive. Sean just had the dead back here wait, though. I still thought yours would move all day once it got started, right? Lots of room on the other side, but they're deciding to keep going. This is where they throw the rocks. This is where they've seen the path. They've seen the curl. Because there's lots of room. He could have certainly come the other way. Yeah, this is the shot he just played, though. I don't expect him to miss anything that he just played, you know, a minute and a half ago. And there we are. And look at that finish yep. right on top, right on the tee. So yep. a score of two to make the score of four to three in favor of PEI at the end of five. We'll be right back after this short break. Curling Cares calendar is back for 2023. 25 curling athletes from seven different nations are raising money for various charities. Support them by purchasing yours today at curlingcares.com. Welcome back to the 2022 Everest Canadian Seniors Curling Championships coming to you from the Yarmouth Mariner Center in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Uh, this draw brought to you by Besh Nutraceuticals. And my name's Dave Doucette, with me, Aaron Sweeney. And Aaron, we've had, uh, we had a steal of two to make the score 4-1, and then got the two right back to make it 4-3. Uh, PEI with a hammer again. So a lead of one and a hammer with three ends to go. It's been a great game. It's been great so far. Enjoying it back and forth, lots of rocks in play. That was actually the easiest end in terms to call uh, at the end of the play. There was very few rocks in play at the very end. One at the top of the rings and the one that really to a, a, an empty house for them for him to uh, to score the two, whereas everything else has been very jammed up. Lots yeah. of guards, lots of rocks in the house, lots of rocks in play. But in this uh, last end, it was a completely different end. Yeah, to be able to have that many uh, places for him to be able to go with those last couple rocks, quite different instead of, well, I have to go through this hole, which is two feet wide. Well, as we continue our walk down PEI's men's team lane, Kevin Champion, the third. He's also a golf pro at the uh, Green Gables Golf Course. Roddy McD uh, McDonald. Deep. Okay. Uh, as my curling career took off once I started playing with him, he was such a calming influence. And he loves boating on PEI in the summer, and who doesn't? There anyway, yeah. Yeah, I went golfing in PEI this summer, and uh, it was golfing at... Uh, Brunel and there was uh, when they had their the Eastern or the Canadian Tour was open. At, oh right, they were yes. playing at Dunderave, which is a golf course connected to it. And then of course outside of that, that's where there was a 
the uh, marina was right there as well, so the boating going right on along there. It's a great spot. It was nice to see tourism come uh, come back to some extent, uh, yep. not just through the whole oh, Maritimes, and I think three. everywhere. Oh, yep, tight. for sure. It's great to see the people out and about again. And just past this one, it's fine. So UConn putting two guards up to begin with as they're looking to have something to work around later in the later in the end. For somebody. Second shot by Mike Mike Dillon. First one stayed out a little bit wide and went probably a little deeper than they wanted to. We'll see uh, they're throwing pretty much the same shot. Yep. They're yep. thinking this one's Still light. Got Still got it. Great sweeping, guys. Great sweeping. And that is where Those sweeping really does. Uh, yep. Great shot. Have a, a great effect on that rock. Yeah, you got a piece of the eight foot buried around Daylight. that guard. That's what they were hoping for. Yukon is not thinking anything about it. They're going to try to go behind that one that he just threw. Need T line, boys. Line's really good. Yep, yep, the line. Hard, hard, hard. You gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go, gotta go. He does. Wow. Good shot. Good sweep, boys. And now uh, through the skips, Mike, I think I could hear it, that it brushed that rock just a, just. Yeah, looks like. Just a tiny little bit. But yeah. once again, great sweeping in order to get that rock where it needed to be. No, he's Looking to, to drive his back onto the yellow or just peel away a guard? I think he's playing the double peel. I could be wrong. Good shot. Okay. Yeah. Good shot. Well, got rid of one. Yeah, left his own up there, though. And I think he was more interested in cleaning out the front a little bit more because instead of running it back because he was running it onto his own yellow, and unless you hit it exactly perfect, you didn't want to lose that yellow. Right. Second rock from Doug Hamilton. Well. And it looks like they're doing the same sort of thing, just bringing another one in there around the guard. Yep, Don. I guess I guess you gotta go. I think this was supposed to be a guard, but he came a little tight, a little heavy. <laughs> Hung out there a long time, that one. You could probably go the outer. And that's you know what, probably if you get you people like that different releases. Okay. That type of thing, you may find. We've seen a couple that have been, when they've gone well to the outside, that you've seen, they've said, oh, well, that one didn't seem to hit the curl. And this one, and that's where it becomes most noticeable, is where you're expecting that big curl, is if you don't get it, it could be the release of a couple of players. Okay. Pick that red one out, lost the roam, but I think they're fully expecting to do that. Yeah. Still sitting two. That was a good one. And their rocks are on the side, so not drawing anything towards the middle. With at least a little bit of protection from a guard just outside the rings. Nice normal. Well, he's playing the So head. nice okay. normal. So normal weight, is that like... Not through the roof weight, but just uh, right. Well, yeah, yeah. It was normal. Well, the normal was the great part. It was the easy part to describe out of that one, oh. Dave. It's <laughs> you know, so it's pick, pick. Whoa, 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 whoa! It picked. All right, they pick. They figure it hit something. Yeah, went sideways okay. on them. Okay, Chris. All right, so maybe explain to the people that are watching. Well, we'll get back to normal later. Okay. Let's do with what what just happened here. Picked. So the, basically the running surface on the rock, which is like a little, uh, let's call it a little dinner plate 
you know, uh, not a dinner plate, a uh, sandwich plate on the bottom of the rock, you know, a running edge that's, yeah. that, that's the only part of the rock that actually touches the ice. So when it's riding down across the pebble, if it catches a hair or a piece of dirt or something like that, has the ability to, you know, kind of interrupt that, that motion and it can send it one way or another. So it's just bad luck when that happens. Yeah. I mean, everyone's, you see them constantly manicuring the ice. They're all walking up and down. They see something, they're just picking it up, they're putting it off to the side. Yeah. So, I mean, yep. it's in nobody's best interest yep. to have yep. the bad luck to have a pick happen. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't ever wish it on your opponent, but you certainly make sure, you certainly want it to happen to your opponent a lot quicker than you want it to happen to yourself. Given the choice. Yeah. But back onto the normal. Okay. Uh, you would have the normal takeout weight would be what you would regularly throw. It might be, you may have uh, different signals within your team that, you know what, you have board weight, which maybe you throw it from here, and if you threw it and there were no rocks or nobody to stop at the other end, it would just touch the boards at the back end. So that might be board weight. Normal weight, maybe it'll bounce back a couple of feet. Okay. Now, so we, normal weight is, is heavier than board weight, normally. <laughs> <laughs> D didn't mean to well, do that, Aaron, within, sorry. <laughs> within my team, it would be, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, there's a lot, of, a lot of screaming here. We better, we better watch this instead. It's been a good bot. <laughs> I love the way he just turns that off. <laughs> yeah. From full bear Shrek yell <laughs> to good sweep. And he gives them credit because that was uh, that's been a couple shots in a row that look, the sweepers have really look how done buried well. that is. That is that's behind the second guard that brought that over so far. And that's going to allow PEI to say time to take a closer look. Wow. All right, so back to our normal since we were so uh, under uh, uh, in most situations then board weight like you said board weight is. Literally, you're throwing it hard enough to go past the hack, so you're hitting the end board, but literally just hitting it. Yeah, and, and maybe they don't have a board weight. Maybe they don't use board. Okay. And maybe that's why they're using normal. nice normal. All right. So uh, it's a controlled weight, controlled takeout weight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I would think even at this level, here's something I haven't seen. I'm not sure if I saw this earlier. A whisk room just as to help them slide out, and that's uh, champion. Kevin Champion, the third for PEI. All right. After a lot of discussion and a lot of weight. It's always good to clarify what turn you're throwing. Yeah, that's That was a very nice yeah. shot as it cleared two out. Plenty easy, though. Still shot rock. Yukon, but uh, we're down to skip stones now. Yeah. The, the, the good part for Yukon here is that they're sitting one, and it's back of the button. It's a great spot for them to be able to put the steel. The bad part for the Yukon here is, is that PEI sitting shots two, three, and four. So... Any little, you know, yeah, we, could, just a little more we could go from tied to blowout. In an end. In the next in a, two in shots. In one missed shot. Yeah. Yeah. But then he's gonna feed one of these, uh, like yeah, that's what I'm saying. Looks like sheet E is, uh, have handshakes. Be close to that, eh? Eight to one after six ends. And that's the end of that one. Uh, eight to one in favor of Newfoundland over Northern Ontario. And that is the men's. Miller's first shot. I see Team Manitoba came all the way back against uh, Northwest Territories women. No, it's, it's Tied it up 4-4 four, four four after five. Yeah, he's looking to get this one in the house. He's seeing it, seeing it turn and doesn't want to brush off, and he's going to. So it might not have been what he wanted, but it certainly has added protection for the rock. He has a shot rock right now. Yeah, he wanted to be in there, sit one and two, yes. to do that extra protection against that big end. But he is—he has guarded his own stone. But like you say, if 
PEI if they can make the run back double here. And that's what I'm saying. This seems to me it lines up. If you hit this in this from our cam yep. camera angle right now, if you hit that dead on, yep. they're just going to peel off. Yep. They're clarifying the turn. They're clarifying the turn. They must it's always good to do that. I hear it's always good to do that. Inquiring squi skips want to know. All it does for me is confuse me because I'm left-handed. <laughs> it does give you a unique angle coming out of the hack, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Easy. All right, how's the lineup look? And he did he get it, it enough? He, yes, did. he did. Well, well done. Now it's a matter of how many rocks. Well, it's one of two things. You can't get rid of everything. So he's going to try to hide it behind the yellow. He has no off switch. I mean, there's no, there's no triple to make here. He's going to get it one way or the other. No, he didn't hesitate. He didn't think about playing a hit. He tapped the broom and said, here's where we're going. They're going to see how far they can brush it out. Yeah, not too deep. <laughs> Beautiful. <He's laughs> Another great shot by Terry Miller. Yeah. And he and actually it was good that he came further back this time because he's he's forcing him into a run back and right. the run back is going to be that much harder to play because of the separation between the yellow and the red rock. Yeah, greater degree of difficulty on yep. that one as compared to just trying to follow the rock down. Yeah, or is you know, but I mean, to you, as you mentioned earlier, it's just a straight run back. Just a straight run back. It's just a straight run back. This was a little longer. I mean, the last one was, you know, <laughs> it was only about uh, about three feet in the last one. This one has a little more distance. He made Now, the he last has one. just made this one, though. He just made yeah. this shot. And he doesn't really need, he doesn't have to worry about the one that he hits the redstone with sticking around. Hey. There's enough other rocks. Yeah. But he missed. He missed it. Whew. And that's going to be a steal of one for the Yukon. And after six complete, we are all tied up at four piece. We'll be right back after a short break. The Curling Cares calendar is back for 2023. 25 curling athletes from seven different nations are raising money for various charities. Support them by purchasing yours today at curlingcares.com. Well, uh, we're welcome back. It's been a really enjoyable match. After six, we're uh, all knotted up at four apiece, and it's just a little, little mistakes. And that was what we had said. He, he, he forced PEI into a very difficult shot, and they just couldn't quite make it. Yeah. He, he does not hesitate to play the tough shot himself, and he went through that hole where they've been trying to figure out how to get through there. I mean, he's whiskering, you know, like he's just making it by guards, by an inch or a hair, it seems like every shot, and making them all. All right, we've got one last bio to go through, and it is a very short one. It is uh, for Skip Philip Gorvet, Network Operations at Rogers Communication. And Eddie McKenzie was influential taught him uh, all he knows about strategy. So uh, it's a big yeah. shout out, obviously. That's, uh, you learn to curl, you learn to do a lot of different things, you learn to be balanced, you learn different weights, you learn everything else, but then I think the last thing that you actually learn that's so important, especially okay. when you get to the skip position, would be the strategy of the game. Okay. Yeah, and, and realistically, the last two guys I think you've mentioned there, they mentioned Roddy McDonald and Eddie McKenzie. 
and I think they're probably two of the biggest names out of PEI when it comes to curling. Yeah, it's it lots there for now. We'll just leave it. Not too bad up front here somewhere. If they've had a chance to play with them and do, you know, different times, that type of thing, you know, you're going to learn. Nice to have those mentors, uh, especially. Oh, yeah. And, and a province the size of PEI. Everyone's yep. going to know everybody else. Uh, you know, Nova Scotia is certainly not big, but it's a long way from Yarmouth to Cape Breton. Yes. Uh, going from Montague to Charlottetown to Surrey, not so much. Yeah, that's right. And I guess we should say Summerside, just to kind of throw our geographical knowledge of the island. <laughs> we can do better with telling, you know, from the Silver Fox okay, well right Curling right Club. Right okay. Nice and tight. Don't well, and I know. Yacht Club. Uh, no, and I know how we can uh, certainly make ourselves look very <laughs> PEI knowledgeable. It's whether or not they're up west or down east. <laughs> Okay, I'm curious, easy. once we get them in the hack again, especially on this end, I'm curious, because right, they threw right. this one really quick. There's still all two right, ends to go. Right. There's been some discussions. I'm curious what their time is like. So the next time we're uh, in there, now. you need about four minutes to easily get through an end. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's going to die. No, it's got to go. It's got to go on its own a bit. Let it hook. Oh, oh looks like they're... Good job. Nice job, Mike. Yeah, yellow's at about eight a little over eight minutes and red's a little over nine. Probably want to play like back line weight. Nine and a half nine minutes and a half. for the so, UConn. So, so they're at just over eight. Yeah, two they, should rocks be fine. they should be fine. They should be fine. They should be fine. I just know there's been a couple discussions, right? Yeah. Uh, especially in some of the earlier ends when there's been a lot of rocks in play and from both teams where they had to really look over top and say, how do you want to come? It doesn't seem to be as much of an issue with the UConn, as you've said, because it seems like Miller is very decisive, very quickly. This is what we're going to do, not going away from it, and uh, more times than not, carries out the strategy. Yeah, and yeah. his team does not question him. You know, hard, 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 like if I had tapped my broom where he did the other time and started sliding to the other end, my team would be like, are you nuts? But he's making it, you know. Have you thought of anything else? Yeah. Have you even considered is there a, is there there's a, a substitute option. to bring in for you? <laughs> okay. So like some of our other ends, now this is early. Once right? again, we're just getting to the uh, uh, just board. into the fourth rock. Nor, you know, but, board, John. but we've got a lot of uh, a lot of rocks in play early on in this end. That surprises you. Uh, well, it seems like it's one or the other, doesn't it? Well, it is <laughs> a lot right away, or things get cleared out quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I think somebody made a mistake that other yeah. end. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Well Good done. Shot. Right through the hole. Well, I know Picked that, it out of there and yeah. slid over. Nice shot. U UConn is doing nothing except Ball trying to goal. work on getting their rocks where he wants to get them. P.I.'s doing a little bit of the hitting when they get rocks in there that they don't like. That's the, you know, it, I guess with Terry Miller and the Yukon crowd here, they're looking yeah. at, yeah. they're playing some weight when they want to put, you know, they need to hit a rock yeah. in order to get their rock where it needs to go. Yeah. And they're coming in with some weight this time because uh, they're going to they're go through the hole as well. Yeah, he didn't want to hit that top yellow first. He did, yeah. thought he was making that. And he hit the top yellow and kicked it across the top. So when he's saying it's his fault, his fault because he uh, he should have called sweeping differently? Yes. Okay. Because it's his job to, to, just, to determine what the line is of yep. the rock coming down. I mean, he didn't have them on it, and he thought I think he thought it was going to hit the right rock, and it came up a little bit there at the end and clipped that top yellow one first. Nice one, John. And PEI's happy with that little mistake just far. to pick that one out and say, okay, right. here we are again. Right. Hit and roll this time, as looks like what Miller is looking for. Normal. I Normal. see we've got another it's final nice over there on ice B. PEI women uh, beat Northern Ontario 7-1. to one. And they close that one down, it looks like, in the seventh end. But we've got a nice match here, and uh, right beside that we've got the We've got the women uh, in a 5-4 match right beside us. 
right beside our featured, our televised match. So UConn's going to play the hit off of this one on the outside, roll towards the middle again. Pile those rocks back up. Nope. Didn't get much of a roll. Nope. Does that mean the exact same shot probably is going to happen next? No, it still isn't bad, but that'll be good. Yeah, if you can roll, that's fine, but we don't really need to. As you said, every successive hit is bringing the next rock one more Another up. higher, yep. Miller's flirting with the officials. He's trying to stay out of trouble, I think. Yeah. Well, like, it's better than... Uh, as opposed to trying to get into it. It's better than Mike Dillon, who's flirting with the RCMP. <laughs> Don't worry, Callie and River. He's fine. <laughs> yep, so now that Rock is a little bit higher on the end. got to try the same thing. He's got no draw right now. There, so he doesn't believe he has a draw through that port to get to where he wants to go, so he's going to play the hit and roll to get there. They're trying to get it to curl in. Some directional brushing. Okay, okay. Not going to get it. Stayed outside. Oh, goes the other way. Oh. Only half on, so. So now they're thinking, not make a whole lot of time sense. Out, oh, timeout, PEI. Important part of the match. Only two ends to go. This is the end that PEI has a hammer. They're going to probably discuss what is the best way. If we do this, he does this. We only have three stones left, three rocks left in play. How do we get two out of this? How do we get more than one? Let's just listen. What about right here? Up here Sean. What about right here? Well, he's just going to play this probably now, right? The draws aren't really the best right now. I think my chance of giving the out turn and not getting back, because that's over buried by the rock. Yeah. I don't like leaving the hole in okay. this shot. Yeah. You want to come in here? Yeah. Right I there. Well, oh. for the out turn? Yeah. Well, we know what's coming here. This is their mate's last stone, is it not, there, Dave? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's tough, though. That's tough. It's Interesting to listen in, though, isn't it? Yeah. Now, the other thing that obviously is an option for the Yukon is he has two guards and one biter that are all raisable. If yeah. need be. Like, I mean, just as, as options that I might like present themselves later on, depending right on what happens. <laughs> well, we're moving right into later on here. Yes. You know, and the, the key thing is now, I mean, we're, this isn't the third end any longer. Now we're talking the seventh end where, you know, neither one of these teams really wants to take one and give up hammer playing the last end up one. I mean, UConn may be actually happy for that right now seeing they're looking at two and PEI is throwing Easy, Mike. so you they're know. trying to go through the hole and just get it uh, into the blue no no not yet you can't go yet Mike not yet line's good now yep yep whoa whoa right here half and half yeah 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 a little more a little more a little more a little more we're sweeping Great well job, done Kevin. Nice good finesse shot. combination of good weight and a lot of communication between the skip and the sweepers for line. Not yeah. Good. They were worried about him coming through the hole and making the hit. That's why they guarded that one, leaving him the same shot he had been playing right along here, this hit from the outside in, which probably not a bad idea because they hadn't been able to get an inside roll off of it the few times they tried it. 
based on what that position is like, I'm just trying to think of because uh, it looks like they're going after that rock. And so the secondary, uh, not, the, not the option, but they're easily going to get one of run, rid of one rock. Is the option now, what's the second rock we can try to get rid of? Yeah, Got to go for it, I guess. Yeah, so right now I think he's hoping to take away those two that are the one that they just threw. I mean, now PEI sitting three, right? right? So we're taking away the one that they just threw and the one to the right-hand side, hopefully, um, leaving PEI sitting one. The Definitely can't give up more than two. The dangers in this would be uh, jamming on the back on one of the, like, on not getting rid of the second one? Um. Well, that's definitely a danger. But I mean, you're going to get rid of one. One's got to leave as long as you get through the, the guards. Well, I think that's the bigger problem to him right now is just to. Kind of a and the hole's certainly big enough. He wants it to curve, to curl. All right. Little. So still one and two for. PEI, and we're going to get PEI's first skip yeah, stone. Like right there. And he's not happy, but where is shooter roll? Because it bumped that rock that he was using Maybe. earlier, made that, well, there's one that's outside the rings now to use. But I'm certainly sure he doesn't, he's not going to just walk up and tap beside that and run to the other end. The he's going to want to make sure that's the last option. Yours was a, took a long time and you only had 12 foot weight, right? Yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. So just they're going, they're going after the Yukon Rock? Just no, he's putting it back where it he's was. He's putting it right back where it was. Still wants to, still wants to plug up that hole. Yep. So be patient with it. He just didn't get enough of that uh, rock that he was hitting there at the top. Never. Oh, wow. That is staying out. Hard, Chris. He is going to raise a red. Interesting. All right, so that did not do what he was expecting it to do. Not heavy. They are still one and two, though. It's not heavy, really. Yeah, but I gave you, I gave you more than that. Like you have more. Final yeah, rock for Skip Terry on. Miller. Interesting shot. And it looks like he's going to go right down the gut and hit the one on the button. Yep. I'm not sure. How much did it show that he can see of that rock there? You can see most yeah. all of it. If you can, you'd just be hoping to. Uh, yeah, it hits that. I'm sure he'd like to stick around. That would be the. Maybe not right there, but if he could hit this and roll over behind that uh, yellow second shot, I think he'd like that. Yeah, I haven't really seen this pass here much. That's on the guard. Uh, whoa, whoa, he thinks it's on the guard. Sorry, boys. Well, uh, so how quickly an end can change. They believe they're one two, although uh, they're taking a yeah. close look at it I from our it from our overhead. Two. But that's not always correct. It certainly looks from our angle. Looks like half of that two. yellow is that in they're the, one two is in the eight foot and not quite half of that red one. I know you don't want to, but I'll just be. I can, but I'm just saying, like. No, no, he doesn't I'm want to mess understand. with anything he already has. He knows he's got two. And he's worried about. Why don't you put some, why don't you put some handle on it out here? Oh. 
Yeah. No, I can do it. I don't I, care. I, so Thank that's you. it, looking to draw That's in that why way. you bring a mate with you. <laughs> to have somebody to talk to. <laughs> have somebody. Talk you out of something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so an important stone here After with a 4-4 four, four, <laughs> four, four tie and uh, a draw that will need to get pretty much what? All of the eight? Yeah, if he gets a uh, full eight foot, he's good. I mean, there's lots of eight foot out there to the right-hand side of that yellow stone from our vantage point. Right. From his vantage point, it'll be to the left-hand side of it. But there was no real need for him to get, you know, worry about that center guard or go back where he just was and tapped in that red. In, that's how that red got to there. Because he just played that And side. there's no danger here. It's, I mean, you're throwing a soft rock. Thing. If anything really bad happens, the worst thing that happens is you're, you might nudge your own you're if you're inside. Yeah. You're never touching it. Never touching it. Never touching it. Never Can they get it there? Yeah. And the answer Great is show. yes, they good. Good pressure shot uh, by Skip Philip yeah, Corvette. And that's a yeah. count of three in the seventh end. That puts PEI up seven to four as we go into the final end of the match. And we'll be right back after this short break. The Curling Cares calendar is back for 2023. 25 curling athletes from seven different nations are raising money for various charities. Support them by purchasing yours today at curlingcares.com. Welcome back, curling fans. We're into the last end of our feature match. PEI with a score of three in the seventh end, up seven to four. UConn has been, it's been a terrifically curled match. I really, there's been some good shots from either team, Eric. Yeah, it's, this is, this has been great right down. There's been a couple of misses with last rocks here with, from the UConn skip that have cost it. But, I mean, he's put that burden on his own shoulders. He said, you know what, I'm not bailing out early. I'm going to play this right down to the end. And if I miss, I miss. And that's why he's played the whole game. All right, so the strategy here. UConn has shot rock. UConn needs at least three. They have last rock. Uh, sorry, I have last oh, rock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, UConn needs at least three. Uh, so PEI would love to just run them out of rocks. Yep. I mean, that's yep, right. That's they get the one in, you get it out. Exactly. So that being the case, does UConn need to put some guards up here because they need rocks to work around so they aren't just easily picked up? Ex exactly. Okay. And I mean, and they're also, by the looks of it, getting help because PEI just put up a center guard. I've seen some people, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but some teams might even say, you know what? I'm just going to burn my first rock. I don't even want it anywhere there. Could PEI have done that and just said, we're just we're going to get rid of one because I don't want it well, to be a nuisance they or something like they that. They could have thrown it through. That's what I meant. Yes. That's what I mean. Throw it straight through the house. Yes. Just normal, Mike. I, That's it, normal. That's personally what I would have done. Okay. Up three, I'm, I'm not making it. I mean, that's why they brought in these the five rock rule and such. They've tried to make it so that it makes the last end a little more offense. You've got to play a little bit more instead of just running teams out of rocks. Well, what he can do is at least peel his away or one of them away anyway. That's right. So, and he couldn't really do much more than that without disturbing the red and having to put everything back to the where it was because of the five shot rule. Yeah. And so but, now actually, but now a little wall there to come yeah, around. Well, he's he's actually going to go guard that yellow, so that they can't remove their own this time. And we'll see what PEI does from here. But that's what he called for was to guard that yellow, so that they couldn't remove it. Exactly what you said. Looks like it's a little heavy. Well, well, hard to get that out and not do something to uh, you hit a, an no, intern. Not much there. I suppose you could if you hit it thin enough. Well, that's the thing. He's going to make this awfully difficult on himself to peel that out. No, well, there's nothing really here, Sean. There you go. No. Yeah. Not worth the risk. Here. Okay. 
at the end, guys. Just at the end. Close. Yep. Whoa. Okay, well, you got room, Mike. Top four only. Not even. Not even. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's going around whoa, whoa. that guard. Great way, Sean. Yep, good shot. Great shot. Kept it in front of the T line. That's the most yeah, important thing know. here. For yeah, him. Stopey deep. We've certainly discussed that at length. Yep. Yeah, I think it'll spring back up. And be worse well, in this spot. Yes. Half a rock will go. Right? But you have to be pretty accurate with it. Is he looking to try to follow it in, or is he? Yep, just right. down to the face of that. Yep. Go. Go hard. Hard. Hard, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bounce at him. Yes. Bounce it, bounce it, bounce it. Okay, okay, okay. So we've got through. Is he going to be? I think that comes through here. Here. Yeah, that's what I mean. Sit right there. This is coming into here, though. You got to get as close to the nose as you can. So he's just on the edge of the rock looking for a nose hit. Yeah, this Trying to run his light. back and maybe get rid of a red at the same time. Yep. Yep. Whoa. 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 That yellow one, Mike. Great shot. And that's what he wanted to do, disturb the wall. Yep. You are going to get the other one. Good shot, John. Get as many rocks out of there as he possibly could. Now the, the, last game of the night. second rock by Hamilton. Yukon's going around that corner guard. I'll be thinking about you tonight. <laughs> Back eight, boys. Back here. So looking for back eight. Back here. How much? Okay. So he's saying you can see a third, but he said how much he said a third. So he's basically no, I think he asked. He said three quarters. Oh, three quarters. Yeah. So it's literally how much of that stone can I see? Yeah. Whoa. 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 From his spot Whoa. in the hack. Right. So he can. Going in the pocket. Great shot. Keep the house as clean as possible. Great That's shot, all PI is trying to do. Yeah. It's a good shot. Nice one. PEI needs three to tie, and they're, they've got four rocks left. So, and nothing so you to start those. counting. <laughs> yeah, I mean the couple of guards they've got there, are, one of them's fairly tight to the house. Be a tricky split just from where it sits on the side, but. Yep, 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 guys. Hard, 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 we are one rock away or maybe two rocks yep. away from shaking hands. Yep. Yeah, that's definitely the one to hit as well Clean. for that reason. Little bit, little bit, little bit. Because that one definitely could be split. Nice shot, Kevin. Been back and forth with the uh, Manitoba Northwest Territories match uh, to the left. A uh, three spot in the uh, seventh and Northwest Territories is back up on, on in front, seven to five. So it's been a great match, and this is on the women's side, um, back and forth. Uh, yep, 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 yep
Yeah, for a line, I think. No, 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 Got to go for a line. It's running tight. Okay, you gotta go for a line. Gotta go for a line. Gotta go. No, it's not. No. Gotta go. I don't think so. What are we doing, Elmo? Yeah. Well, I don't want. I think they shake hands right now, can't they? Here, well, I guess they've still got things to raise, so maybe not. Like that. Well, with the two left, he has to get one of those guards on and huh? spin the rock on. Probably that one. What? You can see a lack. Then when you switch, this one's wide open. Even if I change the color, what's the difference? Or draw. Or draw. No, I don't mind it. Still, still a tough shot, whatever way you shake it up. So. Right? Oh, yeah, my broom's down. What are they trying to avoid? I mean, what are they, what are they trying... Are they uh, trying to leave the most yeah. impossible shot potentially for you, Con? I'm. Uh, Seems like a lot of discussion, and I'm trying to try yeah. to figure out why. Yeah, you and I are both trying to figure oh, okay. out why. It's not just me. Not just you. I. I mean, I have to be honest. I'm not sure what he's playing. Uh, maybe he's just playing a draw so that they have to play in. Instead of splitting a rock on, they have to take out two yellow rocks. Okay. But that, realistically. I mean, you don't want to mess things up, right? right? Because even if you don't throw your last two rocks, it's tough for them to get three. But I think if I was throwing the rock, now I'm more confused. <laughs> Swing and a miss. I, could do it. Interesting. I didn't think I could do it. <laughs> oh, the shot was reasonable. Because I would have thought, if you're going to hit one, you hit the one that's on the center line. It's closer to the house. Well, I guess it's yeah. not closer to the house, but it's and it's an easier split because you could drive it onto one of the yellows and perhaps hit it thin, and you could use the yellows on the left as a catcher to right. get two rocks on. I mean, that's what kind of desperation we're going to be talking about. Right, here. yes, and that's what we are talking about right now. Yeah, oh, yeah. Take a break. Did that hit something again? Well, I think. Wow. Yeah. That's good. Pick. Thanks, okay. guys. And that's it? Yeah. The They're shaking hands. They're going to shake hands with uh, just a couple of rocks left. So, a great game, Aaron. Maybe some uh, final thoughts on the game. Yeah, I thought it was a really great game. I mean, a couple of shots here and there could have made a world difference. Uh, fortunately for PEI, they kind of grinded it out the whole way through, played every end fairly consistently, and showed up on the end with that 7-4 win. Make the final, PEI 7, UConn 4. That's going to even PEI up with a 4-4 four and four record overall. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us at uh, the 2022 Everest Canadian Senior Curling Championships, being brought to you from the Yarmouth Barrier Centre in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Myself, David Doucette, my partner, Aaron Sweeney, on behalf of us and all of the volunteers behind the scenes, thanks for joining our coverage. Hope you join us again soon. I forgot that you don't drink, I'm sorry. Gatorade time. There you go.